Breaking news, Red Sox infielder Trevor Story had surgery on the UCL in his right elbow. The club announced on Tuesday the operation, often an alternative to Tommy John. And while no timetable was provided, this surgery usually requires a four to six month recovery, meaning Story could miss significant time. That's bad news for the Red Sox, who suddenly find themselves shorthanded up the middle with Story hurt and Xander Bogarts gone to San Diego in free agency. Here is Chief Baseball Officer for the Boston Red Sox, Heim Bloom, with the latest. While ramping up the throwing, Trevor experienced uh, pain in his elbow. Uh, this was just before Christmas. Um, and it so happened with Dr. Meister being local to him, he actually saw Dr. Meister before coming to Boston for an evaluation here. Um, you know, we, we wanted to be able to have both evaluations. And, uh, you know, just in conversation um, with everybody, uh, you know, it was clear that surgery was an option, and that's ultimately the option that uh, we decided to go with. Let's welcome in our former World Series champ with the Boston Red Sox, Will Middlebrooks. Now, Will, you just heard Bloom out there saying that this injury occurred while he was ramping up right before Christmas time. But has the elbow been an ongoing issue with Trevor Story? Yeah, so this is, if you look at his medical records, he had elbow issues first in Colorado in 2021. So this wasn't a surprise. Uh, the Boston Red Sox were aware of this when they signed him last spring training. They were aware of this and he, him, the maintenance that, that took place every day to get him ready to play uh, during last season. Uh, so this wasn't a surprise. But now as a second baseman, it's manageable. You rehab it. You, you work on it every day, whatever maintenance it takes place on a daily basis, whether it's stem, ice, heat, whatever, stretching, whatever it may be to get you ready every day, it's manageable at second base because you don't have that far of a throw. But if you dig deeper in the details of his arm strength, there were 26 second basemen last year that made 300 plus throws. He was ranked 22nd with 76 mile per hour throw. Uh, that's not good. He's eight percentile in arm strength across all of baseball. Now you can get away with that at second base. Now Xander Bogart signs with the San Diego Padres. All of a sudden you have to go to shortstop. Now early December you start taking ground balls, start playing catch, start getting ready uh, for spring training. Now uh oh, this is feeling different. Heim also Heim Bloom said that it was a different pain that he had been experiencing over the past year. I don't know about that. I don't know the details on that. But regardless, moving to shortstop from second base. Lots of different arm slots, right? High, low, underneath, on the run, backhand, all the way in the hole. you got to throw it a lot farther. You need arm strength from the shortstop position. He's lacking that with whatever injury is going on in there. He had to get this done. Now, I know for a fact that you are not a doctor, um, but what kind of timetable are we looking at here? Yeah, um, everything indicates four to six months. Obviously, it depends on the severity of the initial injury. Uh, how intensive the, the, the surgery was itself, how much hardware they had to put in there. Now, the internal brace in itself is, is one piece, so it's, it really has to do with how severe the injury was. Now, there is a timetable you can look at He's, that from previous injuries similar to this with baseball players. He should be able to start hitting in 10 weeks. Now, that puts him at um, early April. Now, he should be able to start throwing, lawn tossing in 12 weeks. That's the second week of April. Uh, but then he's probably not gonna be able to play till July. That's like mid season. So th they're looking at five to six months, in my opinion, to be safe. Heim Bloom didn't feel very confident to say that he would even play next year, which kind of worries me considering the timetable says July. So I guess it's one of those wait and see David Sampson moments. Wait and see. I love when you give a little David Sampson shout out there. Also, I'm sure that the club wants to, you would hope that they want to um, promise, you know, at some point this year, maybe he'd be back towards the end of the year and then and deliver more if that's possible. Now, in his absence, what do the Red Sox do at this point? Yeah, it kind of throws a kink in their plans because Kike Hernandez was supposed to be their center fielder. Now, have uh, Jaron Duran, who's a young, really fast, exciting player, hasn't played great defensively, hasn't done a whole lot offensively. He's still developing as a big leaguer. Um, he's going to have to slide in that center field position. Kiki Hernandez is probably going to have to move to shortstop. Christian Arroyo will play second base. Heim Bloom also said we're looking at free agent market. We're looking at trade options for the middle infield. Jose Iglesias is an option. Elvis Andrus is an option. Uh, there's plenty. There's a couple of guys out there, journeyman infielders, who could who could fill that role for a few months if need be. Uh, it, it's not looking good now. Kike Hernandez is a very good shortstop. We saw him play a lot of shortstop last year when Trevor was down with 
with other injuries. He can play that position well, but I like him in center field. I don't fully trust Duran out there yet, so don't be surprised within the next week or two you see a shortstop or middle infielder, versatile middle infielder sign with the Boston Red Sox. And Bloom did say there's there's much more to do, and that not only now is dealing with the infield situation, but the Red Sox as a whole. So are there any other areas that you feel like the, Ro- the Red Sox need to shore up before we head to spring training? Yeah, one of their biggest issues last year was their bullpen, and they sure shored it up. They brought in Kenley Jansen, who led the National League in saves with 41 saves last year to be their closer. Uh, They brought in a couple other guys, uh, Chris Martin, Jolie Rodriguez, some other arms. Their bullpen's better, but their starting rotation, as you see right here, is an issue. You're you're relying on two of those five guys who've hardly pitched at all over the last five years in James Paxton and Chris Sale. You're bringing Corey Kluber, who's about to turn 37 years old, Nick Pavetta, had it okay. He was like hot and cold last year. He was either really good or really bad. There was no in between with him. And then Garrett Whitlock, who, in my opinion, is the best bullpen arm the Red Sox have. Uh, and they, they want to move him to the rotation. They built his his contract he signed last year around incentive based, inning based. If you pitch a lot of innings, you get paid more. They want him to be a starter. You also have Tanner Houck. You have this list of very inexperienced arms behind two players that haven't pitched much in the last two years. So I want to see at least one more. Uh, a top three in a rotation type arm. Will Middlebrooks with the latest on Trevor's story in the Boston Red Sox. Will, thank you for joining us here on CBS Sports HQ. Now, we're about a month or so away from the start of spring training, a little bit more. Never too early, though, to discuss your fantasy baseball team. Check out the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast for all your baseball needs. The latest pod talking about breakout players who can repeat in 2023. Got to tune in and follow along today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.